And welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. Uh, we are uh, actually getting close to the end of uh, the chapter on derivatives. We are working from Finney, Demana, Waits, Kennedy, uh, the calculus book Graphical Numerical Algebraic, third edition. And uh, I am pulling uh, the three examples we're going to do here from that book. Uh, we've already talked about uh, proving where the trig, inverse trig rules come from by doing implicit differentiation and these are the rules uh, and, and just a reminder that the rules for inverse cosecant, inverse cotangent, inverse cosecant, I'm sorry, inverse cosine, inverse cotangent, inverse cosecant are all the exact same thing uh, only you would just do the opposite sign so just as a quick example if this was inverse cotangent we would just stick a negative sign up there okay so just a quick note of that uh, so you get six rules uh, looking like three rules. So that's kind of cool. And, and to the focus of this video is just going to be to work on uh, some examples. So this is an example. This is from section 3.8. And uh, this is actually uh, number 16 from page 170. And we're just going to find dy dx. So I uh, put the little rules up in the corner just for uh, convenience sake here. And uh, just a reminder that we need to r know these rules. Okay, they're up there right now, but you need to know them. Okay, so if we're going to do cosecant, it's really this rule, only since it's cosecant, we're just going to stick a negative sign up there. And a reminder that this is really whatever is the inside of the cosecant goes here. Okay, well, I can put that there too. Okay, so, the in, so in this case, that's just going to be x over 2. So I, I'm going to follow the rule. So dy dx, y prime, equals, just following the rule, negative 1 over the absolute value of something times the square root of something squared minus 1. And uh, that something is just the x over 2. So I'm going to put x over 2 here, and I'm going to put x over 2. And just a reminder that... If this inside has something a little more complicated than just a plain old x, we have to multiply by the, the derivative of that. And uh, x over 2 is the same thing as 1 half x, so the derivative of 1 half x is just 1 half. And really, at this point, we're done. And it could be argued that we could make this look a little bit nicer. OK, I, I'll make it just a tiny bit nicer. But it, I'm really not going to do a lot with this. Oh, I could pro All right, I'm going to go one more step after this, sorry. Since this is positive, uh, I don't actually lose anything by doing this little multiplication and canceling those guys out. And so I'm going to do uh, 1 over, that's funny, negative 1 over, uh, this is the absolute value of x, square root of x squared over 4, minus 1. Yes, it's true. I could make that even look a little nicer, getting a common denominator inside the square root. Then I could do a square root and play around with that. I'm sure that the answer in the book has a 2 in the top and no 4 in the bottom. So, But we're going to call that good. Okay. All right. One example. And again, chain rule is just going to pop up everywhere, so just get used to it. Okay. A uh, little more interesting, find the equation of a tangent line. Well, anytime we're finding the equation of a line, we need to know the slope which comes from derivative, and we need to know a point, which comes from the original equation. And it comes from the original because the original is about y. Okay, so this is one something. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Okay, so, so uh, I'm going to do the y value. So y equals inverse tangent of 1 squared, which is inverse tangent of 1, and the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so this would be pi over 4. And that's just going back to unit circle stuff that you remember from last year and the year before. Okay, so this was all to get the x value and the y value. Okay, they gave us an x value, that was to get the y value. Okay, all right, so to get derivative, to get the slope, we're going to follow the inverse tangent rule. And the inverse tangent rule says this. Okay, so I'm just going to follow that rule. So y prime equals 1 over 
1 plus whatever the inside of that is squared, and then we'll have to do the derivative of the inside. Okay, well, the inside of this thing is x squared, so, yep, that's x squared squared, and then the derivative of x squared is 2x. So this is all equal to just 1 over 1 plus, come on, catch up. Okay, now I'm making a mess. 1 over 1 plus x to the 4th uh, times 2x. I should have just put the 2x over there. Now, I'm going to evaluate this, and I don't think we've used this notation yet, but I'm going to use it now. If I put a line here and put x equals 1 there, that means we're going to evaluate that for x equals 1. Okay, so, so this is now uh, f uh, prime of 1. Okay, so I'm going to just substitute the 1 in now. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 over 1 plus, well, 1 to the 4th, so this is really 1 plus 1. So 1 half times 2 is, you guessed it, 1. Okay, so the slope is 1. Well, that was a lot of work for 1, and I know some of you are annoyed by that, and I'm sorry, but sometimes it really is just 1. So the equation of the line, the equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus the y value equals slope times x minus the x value. Okay? And, and that's it. Uh, you know, if you like uh, slope-intercept form or if you want to rearrange that form, then you're certainly welcome to do that. Okay? All right, well, that's two examples. Uh, one, uh, and all we're doing is using the, the inverse trig formulas. Now, there's one other thing that came up in this section because it's about inverses that really uh, is independent of whether it's trig stuff or not, and that is uh, that this idea that if I do, um, if I know a point x and y uh, from an original function, okay, so whatever this x value and whatever this y value is, I, I'd, I'd actually rather, I know somebody's going to be mad at me, come on, uh, I'm going to switch this to a and b just so that we're not confusing the variable x and y. So if I know an a and a b from an original function, and if I this this point becomes b a in an inverse, well, if I know f prime of a from the original function, let, let's say it's m, then if I do f prime I'm sorry, this would be f inverse prime, so f prime from the inverse. If I do f inverse prime of the y value, remember we're swapping y and uh, x and y when we go to the inverse, it's the reciprocal. Okay, so if I know an original point and I know the derivative that, that belongs to that, then if I go to the inverse, the derivative at that same point, but now we're talking about the, the old y value is now an x value. The derivative is the reciprocal. Okay, so I'm going to we're going to use do this example, and this is uh, number 28 uh, from page 170. We're, we'll do this example just to illustrate that, and uh, the idea is that finding the the derivative of an inverse is actually pretty much just as easy as finding the derivative of the original, okay? All right, so let's, let's just plot along here. F, f of 1, I'm just going to put 1 in here. So this is 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 3. Okay. Well, to do f prime of 1, I actually have to uh, do derivative, okay? So let me just make some room up here, f prime of x, so this is 5x to the 4th plus 6x squared plus 1, and the derivative of the negative 1 is 0. So f prime of 1, we're just going to evaluate this at x equals 1. f prime of 1 is now going to be 5 times 1 to the 4th plus 6 times 1 squared plus 1, so that's 12. 
Now, what I need you to see here is now the, the other parts of this question are asking about the x value 3, but this is the x value 3 for the inverse. So this, uh, the original was at 1, 3. This is now at 3, 1 for the inverse. Well, so this is just 1. And then the magical part of this is the derivative of the inverse at 3 is just going to be 1 12th. And that is done. So there it is, f inverse, der the derivative of f inverse, uh, and then the inverse itself. Okay. I'm just finishing up. Okay, well, that, the goal of this uh, little video was just to see some more examples uh, of the inverse trig function stuff, and uh, that's what we've done. So I think we're going to call this good, and uh, thank you much. Bye.